All right, so you're interested in Wonderware's InTouch because you've heard so many great things about it, but now you're a little unsure which one you need to look at. Fair enough. Frankly, Wonderware hasn't made it easy for us by calling a number of different things in touch, insert next word here. Now, my name is Dylan Pereira, and I'm going to try and help you navigate these waters. The easiest way for me to talk about this is probably to jump back and forth through history and talk about the different versions or flavors of InTouch that have appeared over time. Now, like I said, I'll be jumping back and forth, so this won't be a chronological history, but stick with me and I'll try to keep things at least a little bit interesting. So Wonderware was started on April 1st, 1987. And for any of you who are history buffs, I apologize. If that date is wrong, frankly, you can blame Wikipedia. But them starting out, their first product was their flagship offering, now today still known as Wonderware InTouch. And because it was the original product, I'm going to talk about this as InTouch Classic, the product that's been around since 1987, and at least as of the time of this video here in 2017, has been around for 30 years, currently at version 2017. Now, in 2015, InTouch version 2014 R2 was released. And with this, we got a new option in the software for what is called a modern application. And with modern applications, that gave us a number of new features, the most obvious being some really pretty graphics that, yes, they look good, but also had some additional functionality built in behind the scenes. And when this happened, we got a little bit of a fork in the road. We still use the same software, it's still in touch, but when you upgraded to this version, the 2014 R2 or newer, and you start a new application or you upgrade an existing one, you'll get the option to either use a legacy application or a modern application. If you chose legacy, that means you wanna stick with quote unquote in touch classic and modern Again, it's the same software, just with some additional tools and new features. Now that said, it is the same software, but there is some magic happening behind the scenes to upgrade to the newer architecture, so it changes some of the things in the file system, etc. So at this point, if we take a look, we have two different flavors. One, which is the InTouch Classic, aka Legacy, and the other is InTouch Modern. Again, it's the same software, you just have to choose which set of features you want to use. So let's jump back through history once more to 2007. Now, if you're paying attention to the years, 1987 to 2007, that's 20 years. And at this point, InTouch 10.0 is released. At the same time, Application Server, which is a product that Wonderware has and had been developing for a while, is now released with version 3.0. Now, Application Server is a little bit of a different beast. It's ideal for managing really large systems, also for small systems, but it changes the way that InTouch gets used. In the Application Server world, instead of going into InTouch and building tags, we instead build them all within Application Server in what are called objects. When we do this, InTouch just gets used as a way to visualize the data with everything really happening within the Application Server software. This is very similar to when you might use your web browser to look at email. All the smarts of sending, receiving, storing emails, that's all happening on the server. Your web browser is just giving you an interface to interact with it. InTouch in this system is doing the same thing. So when we use this type of architecture, we say that application server is doing the management and InTouch is just our view client. 
So let's take a look at the slide again here and we'll see that we now get a little bit of a divergence with some sort of meta categories here for standalone and managed in-touch applications. So standalone will be our in-touch classic and in-touch modern applications. And when we're using application server, we'll say that that's a managed application. So if you're with me, let's go ahead and muddy up the waters a little bit because we got to keep things interesting, don't we? So we have standalone in touch and we have managed in touch, but we have scenarios where people like to be somewhere in between. With application server, we get some fantastic features, but there's times when people only want the ability to deploy in touch applications over the network a really cool feature that application server gives us. So they want to do that, but they don't want to go in and build objects for their data. They want to use the traditional in-touch tag name dictionary. In this environment, what we're doing is really using a standalone application, but we're using it within application server just for the deployment. And we're going to call this a hybrid application because it's not truly fully managed, but it's also not truly just a standalone application. So who's going to use a hybrid application? In my experience, this is typically used by people who have in touch that's been running as a standalone application and they want to start moving towards application server, but they don't have the time to go in and start rebuilding their tags as objects. So this gives you sort of a middle ground. You can start as a hybrid application and slowly start moving closer and closer to that managed system. But this gives you a best of both worlds temporarily while you make that transition. So if we take a look at the chart, we'll see there's now four different flavors of InTouch. But the nice thing is these are all very similar. You're still using the same tools that you've always used. It's just within certain flavors, you'll see maybe some additional functionality that you wouldn't in others. The next flavor that I'm going to talk about is something that's come out very recently, in particular here in 2017, and that is InTouch OMI. Now, this is a complete rewrite of the InTouch product and became available with the 2017 version. And from this point, I'm going to talk about this as InTouch OMI, and I'll talk about the original version of InTouch as InTouch HMI, just to differentiate between the two. Now, InTouch OMI is a managed version of InTouch utilizing application server. But as I mentioned, it's a full rewrite of the core InTouch software, modernizing it so we can do things that we couldn't do before, such as multi-touch on the screen, uh, gestures with multiple fingers, as well as little things that have been a nuisance with in touch HMI, such as the ability to resize your applications easily, or even just run multiple copies of InTouch at the same time. Now, InTouch OMI doesn't replace InTouch HMI. It's really just a different fork in the road, but it is, in my opinion, the future of where InTouch is going. Now, InTouch OMI is a managed version of InTouch, meaning it does utilize application server. And for those people who are familiar with managed InTouch, it should be a relatively easy transition to InTouch OMI. And you may be asking, well, why did we need OMI? Well, InTouch, if you remember, is 30 years old. And at its core, the code is 30 years old. We have received new features, but we were a little limited in what we could do. So with the new OMI, we've really modernized the software to give us the ability to do things that all of us are sort of used to nowadays, such as multi-touch and gestures that you can do with your hands. So pinch and zoom is now available with InTouch OMI. 
You can also do things that we couldn't easily do with regular InTouch, like resizing your application without having to worry about skewing your graphics. As well, we have the ability to run multiple copies of InTouch at the same time. So that said, again, InTouch OMI is a managed version of InTouch, so it does require application server and as of right now is not available in a standalone system. The next tool up is called InTouch Access Anywhere. And this one actually isn't a new flavor of InTouch HMI. Rather, it's just a tool to make it easier for us to access InTouch HMI. To use InTouch Access Anywhere, you still develop your application in InTouch HMI, and you do it exactly the same way as you did before. But if you're using InTouch on a remote desktop server, you can install InTouch Access Anywhere, and this lets you view your InTouch application via a web browser. So it's not a new flavor of HMI. It's really just a new way of accessing your existing application if it's on a remote desktop server. And that works for InTouch HMI, both as standalone, modern, or managed applications. At the time of this video, InTouch Access Anywhere is currently only for InTouch HMI. It does not work with InTouch OMI, so be aware of that. But InTouch OMI does have a web application itself. It's just a different application. So if we look at the chart, we'll see here again, we have the same core flavors of InTouch plus a new tool to look at our InTouch applications, and that is InTouch Access Anywhere. The last flavor of InTouch that I wanna talk about is InTouch Machine Edition. And this one is very different. Though named InTouch Machine Edition, this was originally an HMI developed by another company, and they were subsequently acquired by Wonderware. So the name InTouch is included, and as time passes, we're seeing more integration with the Wonderware suite of products, but frankly, it isn't based on InTouch Classic. So what that means is, while you'll still have similar features to what we have in InTouch HMI, the look and feel of the software is very different. You can still do a lot of the same tasks, like displaying data from your PLC, setting up alarms, doing trending, etc. But because it is a completely different code base, you're not able to convert screens, tags, etc. between InTouch HMI and InTouch Machine Edition. Now, Wonderware is probably working on this and conversions will probably come, but as of right now, you cannot convert between the two. With that said, Wonderware is integrating InTouch Machine Edition into the fold, so we do see some really great connectivity to Wonderware Historian, both on-premise and in the cloud, as well as the ability to bring data into application server. So while it's still evolving, and this will get better over time, be aware that it is a different environment. So if we take a look at the chart, we'll see here we now have a number of different products, again, that bear the InTouch name. A lot of them are very similar, but a few are quite different. With that said, one thing to understand is that Wonderware is a company that will not leave anyone behind. If you're familiar with Wonderware, again, they've been around for 30 years and InTouch is their flagship product. If you have an application from those early versions, maybe back in the 80s running on Windows 2.0 even, those versions of InTouch can still be upgraded to the latest version. That says a lot about Wonderware and who they are and where their motives are. My name is Dylan Pereira, and I hope that this video has made it easier for you to understand and navigate the different offerings with the InTouch name. If you do have additional questions, definitely get in touch with us here at InSource. We would love to hear from you.